was that assignment, but he's here today. He I is here I, in all his glory. I have, yes. to, be, I have to be in Gaylord uh, at Otsego Eagle Circuit Court this afternoon, but not till 2.45. There's nothing like a Thursday afternoon in Gaylord. Yeah, particularly since my environmental consultant who was up there last week tells me there's still tons of stuff. There snow is a lot. Around. They had, uh, in fact, yesterday morning, they had five inches of snow in Sheboygan. I hate to hear that's that. That's just bad. That's yeah. just wrong. Although up there, they're probably used to it. Yeah, they, that's no problem. And you have snow on the way in here. A little bit. No, I would just... take a hair dryer to it and get rid of it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hold it. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. You don't, I don't, use the you don't need a hair dryer. <laughs> So anyway, it so took me Bill's a long time. Oh, Bill's no, feisty stop, this morning. Stop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It took me a long time to get here because Tell I, us why. Well, first of all, somebody in the city needs to do something about the potholes on Kibbe Road. There it, it's horrible. Yeah, it's I don't know. Call horrible. seven eight eight so, four so, one well, been, seven I, hold zero. It, hold it, hold it. Hold it. I've been talking about that for a month. It's it's horrible, and it's getting worse. And yes. I drive a Mini Cooper, and I have to. And I literally now have to just slow down to uh, crawl to get through some of the spots. So it's a club. It would be okay. safe to walk around and, and there. And you, you know that it's now, only... what's in the city there? Right. Is some of that summit some? No, what's uh, in summit city. is actually in good shape. Once you hit summit, it's okay. Okay, it's that's all, all the city. city. Yeah. The forward lane yeah. with the um, yeah. with the berm. It, with the that's all in the cold, city. With the, that's all city. Once it goes to two lane is yeah, summit. The city travels, should be right out there. I travel there all the time. Somebody's got to get those Nobody's recorded it apparently. And then. Well, you're kidding me. You don't have to report that one. Everybody that drives you know it coming in from Summit Township. Second. Okay. All right, second. Just second. call and report second. it. I'll call right now. Greg, do we know any city council people? That can get no, I'm done? calling. Yes. I'm calling okay. Tina right anyway. now. Tina's right. awesome. She'll yeah. have, she'll be she'll get it done. Hopefully Pat Birch is listening to this. Uh, <laughs> He's not listening. So uh, <laughs> then coming out here. All right. I'm calling. I, I went out. Uh, I came out this morning. I forgot what I found out last night is I went from West Ave going over to Kibbe Road, uh, and so I go down Kibbe, and I get the weather wax. It's 5.30 in the evening, and I'm in a line of cars. We get there. They're all turning left on uh, weather wax. Nobody can turn left. It's yep. locked off. There's no sign at uh, West Ave, nothing telling you it's a detour. You've got to come all the way back know? again through that terrible... It's uh, large, potholes like on Kibbe, I'm on the, all the way back I'm to good, West. So I did right that now, this morning. I forgot I was on the phone. The I go all the way to Weather Wax. It's closed off. I get so back I to, to call. Uh, West. And I, said, I get I'm on. I go over right fourth. Now. now I get to Fourth <laughs> Ave. I figure I'm clear sailing. Guess what? No, it's blocked off at Park Road. Yeah. Right? So now you got to go over Park to Park and across. So anyway, somebody needs to put good detour signs up. Telling you, just letting you know, I'm going back on the radio. So that's my my complaint. If you listen to this show, Bill. All right. Bye. I've been. Saying that for four days. Okay, okay so I'm sorry. I've been out of town. Tina, I've been out of town. Tina I've been out of town. Perez at the city. Hold it. Let me turn your mic on. Oh, no, did you turn no, it off? No, don't bother. Yeah. Don't the, bother. <laughs> the don't Tina Perez sorry, at the city. Can we turn the mic off on a regular DPW, basis? DPW, uh, eleventh floor, city hall yeah. had called it in yesterday. So yesterday, she reported it yesterday because she drove on it yesterday for the first time in a long time. Well, it's been you a war zone realize... for a month. It's a, yeah, for but, a longer but... than that. I mean, ever oh, since oh, it was okay whoa. during the winter. Yeah, when it was filled with bases, <laughs> yeah. when yeah. the bottles were filled with bases. Okay, but not all city employees drive the same way you do. They don't all go down Kibbe. Well, I would well, be shocked if there wasn't one through, city employee yeah. through there that well, lost their maybe front end. They, Maybe they assumed someone else had called. So you know, 788. And Bill, that's not the worst. 41770. Brown Street is uh, Brown's awful. Terrible. Uh, Brown's West terrible. Ave. West the Ave. Summit South. side of Brown is terrible. West Ave. Both, not both as sides. Bad. Hey, both sides. Not as bad. You, you drive, I go uh, from our house <laughs> up West Ave and then okay. go to Starbucks. And when you get to CVS, you have to actually go into the oncoming lane. And everybody's now doing it. The line of cars. You you put your left tire, left side of your car, over the double yellow line in order to get through the potholes. On and West that's Day. you know that's the block that didn't get done and, last know, year I, when I West Avenue. Do I you make a list? I think about I think city. about normal people <laughs> oh who God. complain to the city. And here I am. I'm married to a city You're council not person. I that's what I'm saying. I'm an abnormal person. I'm married to a city council oh, whatever. person. Whatever. And I can't that even get this That just shows you there's done. no preference given right. to this household. Right. That's all. Anyway. All I'm saying. Anyway. All right, well, Shout Tina out to Troy Gant, and I told him I'd, I'd mention his name on the thing. We were going to talk about how to select you lawyers. Talk, you talk he about said, him all the time. He did have more friends than just one person. Uh, Chris Rowley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving a shout out to Tom Joe Michalski, who's uh, listening at the county. He's one of our 
uh, important county employees that I called this morning about the weather wax closure. Uh, but that's a consumer's energy project on weather wax. Yeah. So if you were listening to the show, you they, would know but that. they need but they need to put a sign up at West Bend telling you West weather wax is closed. Kibby telling you weather wax is closed. No, they just put a you, sign up to listen to this show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I that would, that would work. Well, Joe that. said that it's it's on the county's uh, Facebook and website. <laughs> and I said <laughs> I said Joe, we're not going to go to the computer before while we're driving. Yeah. It needs to be on a sign at the corner. So anyhow, he was going to call, and I'm going to stop. We'll see if we can help. But yeah, that, we'll give the county credit. One of the commissioners was listening when I said someone will be probably killed on Spring Arbor Road at Morrell. Oh, I haven't been out there. There was a gaping. Oh. It was an unbelievable hole in the road. Okay. Right at the worst intersection in town. Yeah, mm -hmm. that needs that whole they intersection. They fixed that immediately. That needs that to be, morning. That intersection needs to be reworked, totally. Yeah, that's that's, that's just awful. That's awful out there. All right. Um, so do we got that out of the way? Are you feeling better? I was feeling I was feeling great before. I just had to mention that so uh, this is the only time I can get a city council person's ear. So I figured I'd yeah, say it this morning. I got to tell you, weather wax is in the county. That's in Summit Township. Yeah. No, I'm I was talking about Kibbe. You know? All right. Okay. Okay. Onward and upward. Yeah. Sure. Right on. Uh, I let's talk real estate. Okay. Okay. Um, I had a, a client ask me if he should. We have an accepted offer on a house, and he uh, his mom is moving uh, to a condo, and he asked me if he could start moving her. But the closing's not till April, I don't know, 24th or 25th, something like that. So tell me what you, the thoughts, or the possessions at closing. So I said to him, well, we've, the home inspection has, is done and the appraisal came in. So now it's just a matter of the underwriting. We've jumped the two toughest hurdles in a transaction for the most part. You mean she's moving out or in? She's moving out. Why couldn't she move out? Well, if the deal falls in our Jackson purchase agreements, the uh, financing contingency isn't removed until we're actually sitting at the closing table. So, so it could so fall. So the out. buyer actually could, if the buyer goes out and buys all new furniture for the house and puts it on a credit card, and they run a credit check the day before closing, or sometimes the day of, now they don't qualify for the mortgage because debt to income ratio is too high, it could fall apart. Well, the risk is also on the other side, and that is when you give, uh, look, I'm, I'm in favor of possession at closing. I think you got three options, possession before closing, possession at closing, possession after closing. And there are risks associated with all three. From seller's perspective, where, you know, usually you've got all of the contingency removal dates predate the closing by at least 10 days, let's say. So you've got a 10-day window in which the seller knows I now have a, a binding non-contingent agreement. I can now move my stuff out safely because I know that it's either going to close or if it doesn't, the buyer's going to be liable for all of my expenses uh, attributable to the buyer's failure to show up at closing. Since you're closing, since you're not removing the last contingency until closing, seller runs a risk, they move everything out, the deal doesn't close, now they got an issue, they didn't have to move out, etc. They're maintaining two households and they have no right to go against the purchaser because it was the mortgage contingency that failed. Right. So, you know. And we've it, seen people lose jobs like the day before closing and, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Right. If you can, I mean, the best protection for a seller against that is, and also for the buyer, remember, the buyer may have all of their personal belongings, all their furniture and everything on a, on a van somewhere ready, ready to move in on that date. Although, if they haven't removed the financing contingency, they probably have an overlap with where they were staying and then they move in after. But at any rate, you know, if you can, you move the contingency removal date up seven days, ten days, fourteen days before the closing, if at all possible. That's, that's the ideal scenario. Um, but you got to remember from the flip side too. You know, here's the buyer. Uh, you got possession at closing. Buyer's got all their stuff on a van somewhere, and the seller, because the seller was counting on moving into another place, the seller's deal falls through. So the seller doesn't move out. 
Now the buyer's got a problem because of possession and closing. They're going to I've got a, one like that that's closing on the 24th. And <clears throat> the buyer's home is out of town. Buyer's home uh, has a, is closing the same day, so they'll close there in the morning, be with their U-Haul or their moving truck in Jackson in the afternoon to close, and hopefully the seller's... Have yeah, I mean, and if the sell and it, it actually happens more often than, than you think it should, where sellers don't move. Something happens; they can't get out, they can't get all their stuff out, and now the buyer's supposed to get possession at closing. So what do they do? And you probably don't have time to talk about that today. We can talk about it another time. Is there a recourse? Yeah, you, know, you got to go to district court. You got to start summary proceedings. You don't have any right to try and dispossess them without uh, the assistance of the courts. Self-help is, is that, not That acceptable. wouldn't kill the deal or anything? Uh, well, you've, you've closed, you know. You, you're, well, to me, the... Yeah, I mean, you, you're sitting at the closing and the seller says, no, I, I haven't gotten out and I can't get out. So the seller the has to get says, out, so the, don't they? Yeah, but... I mean, they if, have to be gone. No, but if they're not, what are you going to do? Well, you, you have to go you to should. district court. You should. <laughs> I, uh, they have to be gone. And then if they don't close, well, you do. well you, lots of people have call to do things, but they don't. No, you can't call a sheriff. You have to actually file summary proceedings in the district Based court. Based on your purchase agreement, right? Yeah. Because you don't own the house yet, so you can't do an eviction. No, you couldn't. No. It, well, you we're we're assuming sure. that you've closed. You close. If you're sitting at closing, I think what, what uh, uh, we're talking about here uh, is... So assuming well, you close. I think close, what Greg is talking about is is where you're sitting at the closing table and you haven't yet closed, right? Or are you talking about you've actually closed? And well, it's the just closed, says, so it's. And that's so the buyer now. Now you got to be out. Yeah, the seller's supposed to be out, but you can't call the sheriff to kick them out. You actually have to file a complaint in the district court called uh, summary proceedings. And it's the same thing as landlord tenant to boot them out. You so don't an have eviction. To, you don't have to do a seven day notice because they don't have. There, there's no uh, non-payment of rent, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't need to do a seven day. So you file your complaint. Uh, landlord tenant court is Tuesdays here in Jackson, and so you show up on Tuesday morning, landlord tenant day, and uh, presumably get a judgment on that date. And then the could the buyer bail from the deal? Well, they, if, if they're, they're not closed, if they if they haven't closed, yeah. In other words, they're sitting at the closing table, and the seller says, "Gee, I can't get out on this date." Uh, the buyer, I guess, could say, "Okay, you're in breach of the deal, so therefore I'm going to get out of it. I'm, I'm going to terminate the deal." But that's not usually the case because the buyer's all set to close. The buyer's well, got the usually... mortgage. The buyer's got all kinds of costs incurred in buying the property. So you go ahead and close. You now go after the seller. For well, and this is why you have a realtor involved because. We're going to know whether the seller's out or not prior to closing. Yeah, right. And most. I mean, you're going to do a walkthrough. Right, about 24 hour walkthrough. Through, and to make sure the house closing. is in the condition that you expect it to be or you thought you were purchasing. Uh, if their furniture's still there, then that's one red flag, right? So if everything goes down on, on one day, it's, it's pretty risky. Yeah, it's it's Can difficult. Be. Yeah, but as Laura says, you do a, a pre closing inspection to see if the seller's out so that. When the buyer shows up at the closing table, the buyer knows that the seller's not out, right. and all of a sudden they're going to have to deal with that at the closing. You know, if the buyer's able to do it, the buyer negotiates with the seller. They provide for some amount of rent. The seller says, I'll be out on thus and such a date. Of course, then that date arrives, and the seller still isn't out. You still have to go to court. Yeah, the one that I've got coming up where it's backed, so the, the couple's moving here from Livonia. Uh, they'll close on their house. They'll come to town, close on their new house. The seller's that of the house they're buying will close on the house that they're moving into. Fortunately, the house that the sellers are buying is vacant. That much I know. Yeah. And I will say in other communities, uh, it, the common practice is not possession of closing, it's possession 30 days after closing. So well, that, that used to be very common here. Was it? Oh, yeah. yeah. You'd close and then the seller would have 30 without days to rent get out. Without was common. Sometimes without rent. And these days in, in other communities where I do stuff, uh, that would be with some amount of rent yeah. for that period of time. It's and then, like without rent, it's oh, becoming less and, common. Hold on, and then, then it will also provide that in the event the seller isn't out on the date, and so it's supposed to be out, now the rent doubles. So there's economic incentive for the seller to, to get out of there. We actually, if the possession isn't at closing, we have this, uh, everybody signing a possession agreement 
and sometimes there's a deposit included. It always yeah, there's withhold. There's a holdback at closing yeah. of the seller's proceeds to make certain that the rent is paid and that they're out out of the place on time, and that the because now I've closed on the deal as a buyer, if I don't get possession for 30 days, I don't know what the condition of the place is going to be. So we want to have enough held in escrow. And we talk we about who the pays carriers. the insurance. Because that property is now owned by the buyer, but the contents are owned by the seller still. Right, so right? it's got to get a renter's insurance. And the seller can't, you can't continue the seller's homeowner's insurance because once you close, the seller no longer has an insurable interest in the property. So it has to be the buyer's insurance that covers the property itself. For 30 days? For whatever the period of time is uh, for possession. But the instant that the buyer closes, the buyer has the insurable interest in the real estate and has to have the insurance in place. You run into a seller not. Moving all, out. all the time? Really? No, I haven't had that problem. And like I said, we usually, the realtors that I deal with, are all, we're always on top of it. We know if there's going to be a problem well in advance so that it can be dealt with. It's idiotic to wait until the last Look, minute and try and figure it out. Wait a second. Okay. Of, of all the people that you know, would you agree with me that the majority of them are procrastinators? Look, all you have to, what does that have to do with anything? Because sellers wait and wait and wait and to get their stuff out. And so what happens is they get down to D-Day and all of a sudden the stuff is not there. No, and, and as I say, no, I, I, I can see what I think what, the, I, I'd know. have to disagree. Most of the sellers that I deal with, the minute we put that sign out in the yard, they're already, um, first of all, they've already packed up a lot of stuff because we, we ask them to declutter their home. We have someone come in and stage it. But even with that said, they're already, they start immediate. Well, I, I don't know that I've ever ran into, run into anybody who has uh, waited till the last minute. Well, there's a reason I run into it more often than you do. Because you're a lawyer. That's correct, because people call me when there's a problem. I don't get involved if there's right. no problem. So, yeah, I, I know that if we've ever moved, you've always been right ahead of the game packing, <laughs> doing all that stuff. So. You know. <laughs> <laughs> sarcasm. I'm not seeing that. that. Sarcasm does not really become her. You know that, Greg? Okay. Really? I, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I did not. I really uh -huh. didn't. Uh -huh. I really did not think. I can't that. picture you packing. So. <laughs> yeah, and there's a reason why you can't picture that. Okay. <laughs> I have minions that do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh God. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, not going to be handling. That. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, possession's a pretty important part of the whole. Your bottom yeah, line as a seller, your bottom line is the most important part in possession. Well, and, and let me also say that, that you're, as a seller, you're absolutely nuts to let the buyer take possession before closing because so many times the buyer moves in, finds a problem, and says, I'm not going to close unless the problem gets right. fixed. So that's the absolute worst case. And we rarely see that happen. At least yeah, I don't encourage yeah, those, that. You, you, see it, you see it most often where the seller has already moved like out of state, the property is vacant, and so now they're actually they're anxious to have somebody move into it but I'll tell you what there's a huge risk if it's somebody moving in and then you expect that they're going to close on the deal because well, they'll come back Speaking of moving out of state uh, we just listed a home where the gentleman moved to Arkansas so 411 West Morale a very cool two-story brick home with a two and a half car detached garage fenced in backyard the woodwork in this house is amazing. So near the intersection with Spring Harbor? Right. <laughs> is that pothole thing? Yeah. Um, a hardwood floors. It is four bedrooms, two full baths, and uh, it's over 2,000 square feet. Very, very cool house. And then uh, we have a new listing at 739 Pemberton. Oh, I'm sorry. The one on West Morale is listed for 799 and then 739 Pemberton, this house is really deceiving from the outside. It looks like it might be on the smaller side. It's, it's very large. And it uh, could be a five bedroom house, two full baths, two half baths, main floor laundry, main floor bedroom. All the rooms are large, great uh, subdivision, nice backyard, walkout basement, 229.9. dollars And then we have a price reduction at 11498 Minor Road, which is a Western School District property. Um, 142, that's a steal. This house sits on about three acres, and there's a ton of outbuildings. 
and it's a three bedroom, uh, one bath home that's about 1,500 square feet. It's got a lot of outdoor living. That's a steal, so we need to get that one sold. Call this number. 780-3800.